let's talk about the cold frame. What do you got going on growing in here now? So these are our our garden starts. We got lettuces and kales and and parsley's and all kinds of stuff. And our greenhouse is kind of stuffed up with other plants. Plus, they don't need to be that hot. So this we don't have the heat on right now, and we just um, set them in here, composted some of the chickweed, and we water them and they get sun. We open it up every day and, and we can close it down at night so they actually get direct sunlight so it's not going through any poly, you know. It just helps protect them from cold nights. We've had some like about 30 degrees lately. I see you got um, pots in here now? Yeah, so we got pots and and trays there. These are special kind of a, a root pruning pot tray. Oh, where it's open for the air? Yeah, so it's open for the air. So the roots will get out in that air spot and they'll burn off and then they'll branch out and make more roots. So it's a good way to make healthy roots versus kind of they, roots need oxygen. Uh, what do we have growing in here right now? So these here, obviously these are kale, these are lettuces, uh, these are probably some basil, so probably holy basil, some parsleys, looks like another variety of kale, probably some collards, some cabbages, and then these bigger ones that I planted earlier this spring, the radishes, they were planted too close together, it got too warm in here, they want to go to seed, but you know, if if you're blending or juicing or making soup, the leaves are great for that. They're really nutritious. So this is radish? Yeah. Wow. So these are all different different types of radish leaves. And I forget what this is. It made it through the winter. It's a... Uh, hmm. It's like an endive or, you know, one of those varieties. Cool, cool. But it's, it's good too. And the chickweed is in the back. So I don't know if I talked about chickweed last time, but it has vitamin D in it. And it grows in the winter time. What could be better? Right. And it seems to be fairly cold hardy. So I harvested lots of smoothies and salads out of here this winter. This is our fig tree. This is a mission fig. And you can see that this one is actually growing. And this one is actually growing. That one is. You see this one back here. The bark is coming off, and you can see that it's, it's probably not going to make it. It's sort of alive, but not really. It's not, it's not going to grow. And this one here, it may shoot out down lower a little bit. Yeah, so it's still alive right here. Mm -hmm. You can see that little shoot. So some of them made it, the little ones I mean, may make a shoot out of there. So, but then if, if we go over to this, Big. This is a brown turkey that we just planted last fall, and it looks like it's all dead. Yeah. It's all, it's not gonna make it. Hopefully, it'll come up from the roots. And we just mulched this area. You can see that it's, I don't know, a lot thicker than it was before. Yeah. It's deep or something. There was really no mulch here at all. That might be 20 apple bins full of mulch or something like that. I put leaves down first. And um, our pear tree, it's got three grafts on it. We've gotten a little bit of fruit. Hopefully it'll do better this year. This is an autumn olive. We've never gotten any fruit. It makes blooms. I don't know if it needs a pollinator or something's not right, but it seems to be healthy. And so a rose, so roses, are actually in the same variety as hawthorns. And hawthorns are my favorite leaves to eat. They have, they have like a sweet aftertaste. But the roses are in the same family and if you have a rose, you can eat those too. I mean, people eat rose hips, vitamin C. Why not eat the leaves? Especially when they're tasty. Now, right here, at first I thought this was just kind of broke off and laying there, but this is wired on, that 
French right. stick there. So origi Why? originally I had a stick here. See, pears don't like to fruit so much on vertical pieces. So if you force the branches down, it will turn them into fruiting branches. So that's what you're doing here is you're pulling them down with these uh, Yeah, I was pulling them down there. with these strings, the strings to get them to fruit. Okay. And, and so that was what that's about. And pear trees, can't believe how slow they grow. <laughs> so. We just planted an Asian pear. Nice. It was like 21. I saw it at Costco. Nice. So yeah, this is a hawthorn. There's a lot of different hawthorns. This is a variety that blooms in red blossoms. And the seed has like, or the fruit has, the seeds in it are are multi seeds. I think there's three seeds in it. And I have a hawthorn out back that has one big seed in it, kind of like a cherry pit. And the fruit is sweet. You know, yeah, it's got a big seed in it. I actually mostly eat leaves instead of the hawthorn fruit. This is a plum tree. And I use the plum leaves. I use the plum shoots. You can see there are some, some of the shoots that are left. I'll just snap those guys off instead of composting them. I throw them in the blender for hmm. more nutrition. Uh, you know, the leaves are pleasant. They, I read a study on black plums and they found that there was certain anti-cancer properties in the plum leaves. So, I mean, I have a plum, why not? It's free, I feel mm -hmm. good. This is Oregon grape and it, it does not lose its leaves so sometimes in the winter time, if I'm looking for something, I'll, I'll grab some tin, more tender leaves. They're not, they're not anything here that's too young, but it's starting. But the young leaves, they're tender. They go into smoothies good. You know, yeah, you have to blend, blend them a little extra. But the Oregon grape has, um, people use a root. They pull the root up and they scrape the bark off and there's this really yellow, substance that's antifungal and people use it in salves and such so you know everything has good benefits and people use um bamboo shoots in asia so right this is a different plum this is a black like a purple type of a small plum this is a yellow plum i don't know the names they were here when we showed up hmm. and we left those this is hops this is um A plant that I brought home from a hops orchard they were pulling out. Oh yeah, there they are. Got some fruit. Mm -hmm. Let's put some fruit on that. Good deal. And all the way up there too. There's a bunch. Yeah, they're kind of high, but my ladder can reach and I, yeah. I didn't want to prune them off because I knew I was going to get fruit up there. And then these what are, was this? So these are apricots. You got a bunch of fruit in there. And the apricot leaves are quite edible too. Hmm. They kind of taste like apricots a little bit. <laughs> so we mulched this area here as well. This was mulched in the last video, but it wasn't finished over there. I think we still had some landscape fabric down. I had like a berm going on over there. A tractor. Yeah, we had the, for <laughs> we had the forklift in the bin and uh, finished mulching here, kind of all around that area. Pulled up all the, the landscape fabric. This is like a foot deep too, right? Right. These are fava beans. What I did to plant the fava beans is we, we uh, soaked the fava beans until they were almost sprouting in the house. And then I took a stick jammed a hole in the mulch, made a hole there, dropped the bean in, and then I just took a little potting mix, potting soil, and dumped it on top. And they came through the potting soil and out, and, and we planted them um, February or something, when it was still lots of frost, and we got lots of frost with them completely covered before they even made it through the soil, or through the top of the mulch. So they seem to be a hardy, hardy thing and a good thing to start early. And this is a special, variety of nettles that I brought home from here in the valley and um, the leaves 
are actually some of the tastiest nettle leaves that I've found so far. They're not bitter, they get big. Some of these plants get nine feet tall in the wood chips. So they really grow well. And yeah, they have spines on them, but they only kind of go one direction. So you won't get stung, especially on your fingers. You know, if I did it like mm -hmm. this, I would get stung. It's not a bad thing being stung. People used to whip each other in the back for back pain because there's an acid there that deadens the pain. So, and the antidote for the sting is in the leaf. So if you carefully put it in your mouth and you chew it up, you're really not gonna get stung. Hmm. Cool. Braver than me. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of good stuff in there. Nettles are 20% minerals. So Everybody this, loved this tree. So this is mulberry. And you can see it's making mulberries. And we use the shoots and the leaves and smoothies and stuff. Usually when they get a little bit bigger I start foraging from here. They're the only food of the silkworm. So they're also 10 times as nutritious as cabbage. Really? And yeah, it's kind of a fun tree. You know, we come here in the summertime and or in the spring and it's the first thing that makes fruit, you know? And it, they're so sweet and I mean, sometimes I have mulberries dripping off my elbows. <laughs> they're really juicy and it's a fun thing to, to just, when you're hungry, come over here and don't stop until you're full. Yeah. Those are um, horseradish. So horseradish leaves, we can eat those. They, they're a little bit bitter, but they're horseradishy. <laughs> a lot of people use the roots. We use the leaves in, in pickles and sauerkraut. It, it helps to kill like bad bacteria and stuff or fungus or, you know, helps to give you more crisp um, ferments. So these are more honey berries. Here we have strawberries. These were our tastiest strawberries last year. I don't know which variety they are, but I did, like uh, Paul had mentioned, I covered all the strawberries with wood chips. Just kind of raked it over the top so I could just barely see a leaf or two sticking out. Right. And they seem to have come through pretty well. And so over here on this property we were there's lots of Bermuda grass and, and stuff that was coming over, so I got permission from them and I dug it all out. And then I put the landscape fabric down there and the mulch over here to keep it from coming over onto this property. Because it's hard to deal with it around fences. You can't really, you know, put anything down because it's got fence posts and it likes to live under the fence post or under the concrete in the fence post. So I just kind of had to manually dig it out. I didn't get quite finished over there, but they wanted their garden area back. So I just finished and, and covered for now. And I'll get back to it when I get back to it. Some raspberries. These here, we're going to uproot those and move those because they you got to have space. They just spread so much. We can't get through uh, by the fence there. So these are the ones that Donna just planted last summer, fall, and it's interesting, raspberries, if a cane touches the ground, it makes roots. So there was one cane here that was growing over and touching the wood chips over there and it made all kinds of roots. So this is actually upside down, but the roots are on the tip, so I stuffed it in the soil. <laughs> so we'll see how that guy does. And. Um, this is a volunteer. We had planted an apple tree. Apple tree got sick and died. And there's a grape here that, that I think it'll live through the winter. It came up from seed too, so I don't know what it's gonna produce. Donnan says that's a flowering quince. I don't know what it is, but it tastes a lot like hawthorn. The leaves do. But it does have pretty flowers. Yeah. 
haven't tried a flower. Try a flower. Not too bad. This is an apple tree, and the other one's a cherry. I don't know what kind of apple tree this is, but it produces nice little apples, kind of striped a little bit. Just small enough so you can stick a couple in your pocket and eat one when you're hungry. So it's kind of fun. This is like a pie apple, pie apple, a pie cherry. And it's, it's a little bit sweet sour, but it's, it's good. And it just came from seed. We used to have a cherry tree in our yard that was a really old one. And uh, apparently birds or something brought the seed over here. And we've got a few more that started from seed and I'll probably be moving those. Looks, It looks like we've got a few more cherries yeah. here. So if you can get something with a rootstock, then you can graft. So that's what I'm planning on doing. If, if I don't want this particular variety or maybe I'll let them make fruit. So here is the melon tunnel that everybody loved. And you extended this? So it was four panels long, which is about 16 feet. And I extended it twice that. So it's a little over 30 feet long. And I moved it this way and I moved it a little bit south and uh, it's not quite finished. I took up all the plastic mulch that was here, put down ground up leaves and wood chips. This is about a foot deep here too. This is kind of sinking in yeah. it every time I walk. It's nice. This material here is about four or five years old. We had it in apple bins and the material at the end we sort of ran out and so that's new stuff. So. I tried to kind of level it here a little bit. It's it's not quite a foot deep, but at that end it might be almost a foot deep. Mm -hmm. And um, it's just, the base here is seven feet wide between the bottoms of the panels or the tips of the panels. And I'm going to be installing a, um, a weight-bearing structure. So, because if we grow cucumbers and things that hang a lot of heavy fruit, melons. We grew like cantaloupes that were hanging in here and it gets so heavy that it starts to squash down and it'll sag over to one side. <laughs> so we're going to take care of that. But I'm not quite finished with it. I'm wiring. I put rebar in the ground and I'm wiring down to that so it'll stay where I put it. So the bees are active. Yeah, the bees made it through the winter. They're doing their thing. So good. They pollinated our pears and apples and peaches and plums. They're good little workers. So right here. These are garlic. Most of this stuff is garlic. And I had planted rows and rows of garlic and I was mulching and I didn't want to grind up the leaves so I just started putting whole leaves over it. I put, I don't know, maybe a foot worth of leaves over this. And the first year after I put the leaves over, I saw maybe two garlics come out of the leaves and I thought, mm, whatever, I have more garlic than I can eat anyway. And then the next year I saw more and this is like the third year I think and the leaves have broken down and the garlics are still there so they're pretty tough plants and when I go to dig them out the root is you know the bulb <laughs> is about that deep through this mulch so you know you get this nice long white stalk so it, it worked out. We had built a little lettuce bed for oh, yeah. for the summer because it's so hot, it's kind of in shade. And it did so-so. We just put dirt on top of the wood chips. So it, it definitely needs a little mulch. Looks like one lettuce seed made it through the winter. <laughs> 
but this is wild violets. And so wild violets are for the lymphatic system and they, they're a perennial. They go great in smoothies. And they're, they're pretty tasty, you know. There's lots of, lots of different weeds that we can eat. So these, most all this stuff was planted from seed this spring. Those are radishes, as you can see, a little radish going on there. Yeah. And uh, onions that were, onions just live. You don't really have to dig your onions. They'll make offshoots or whatever. If they're not in your way. These are like a bok choy. These are radishes too. Some kale over there. These are miner's lettuce. They made it through the winter. Wow, it gets big, doesn't it? Yeah. Kind of takes over the place. I chopped the middle out here recently for smoothies and stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't know the particular name of this. This looks like mache or corn salad. These are lettuces. More lettuces. We actually done and set these out. So we just started these guys from seed in the greenhouse. And um, this looks like an arugula. Tastes like an arugula. <laughs> Therefore it is. This is corn salad or mache. It just grows wild here and if you let it, it plants itself better than we plant it. <laughs> so it knows when it's time to come up. Right. Some parsley we set out. Some spinach is here we planted from seed. Some other plants, some cilantro and some bok choy style that made it through the winter. Offhand, I don't know the name of this plant, but it's a hardy perennial. So it made it through the winter. It's got these strings on it, which reminds me of plantain but it actually tastes better than plantain. So it's a, it's another perennial. So we like perennials because we plant those guys once and if they make it through the winter, then we don't have to plant them again. We just, anytime yep. we're hungry, we go and get some leaves. These are peas. The way I planted it, just made a hole in the dirt, in the mulch with a stick dropped the pea in there and sort of covered it back and they ended up coming through. Some of them didn't come through very well. You see I have planted it here. It looks like the mulch was just too thick in the uh, middle for that specific variety of pea. Or maybe it hasn't poked through yet. Have you dug down to see I if... I dug down a little bit and I didn't see anything. Maybe the bugs are eating them off. Probably the bugs are eating them off and that's the problem. But that one might live. And I put a big bunch of leaves on here. And mm -hmm. these leaves are different than the leaves um, that I usually mulch with. These are from our property and they're maple leaves. And so the maple leaves actually end up getting a little more soggy. Right. Those other um, sycamore leaves are more mm, dry and woody. And they don't really get, you know, all that wet. These are Austrian winter peas. We planted these last fall. And they made it through the winter really well. I mean, they were just kind of little tiny spindly things here. Mm -hmm. And now they're going good. And if you eat the pea shoots like this, they're, they taste like snow pea pods. So they're really tasty, they're sweet, they're good for solids. So, I mean, you can, these aren't organic seeds, but you can buy a, a 50 pound bag of, of Austrian winter peas from a, a feed store for like 20 or 30 bucks, you know, and that's enough peas to plant your whole property if you wanted to. Yeah. 
And you'll just train these up or are you going to just keep eating them and before they get too tall? We've never grown them before. So I'll train them up a little bit. I don't know if they make tasty pods. So we'll find out. I guess we'll find out. We got one little guy growing in here. What's that? So that's that machi or corn salad. Mm. It made it through the winter. So a lot of times we leave stuff because if it's growing, it just feels good to let stuff grow. Right. I think that's an orac. I'm not sure. That's a red orac. We grew red, red leaf orac um, last summer. And it made a plant that was six feet tall or more. Wow. And looks like we lost a few seeds in the mulch and it's <laughs> ready to grow. This is land grass and it's pretty tasty. I mean, it's, it's like a watercress. Mm -hmm. It made it through the winter. So that's a good thing, just with the covers. So we're gonna let it go to seed and see if we can't get some seeds. Some garlic and some garlic and some red vein sorrel, and that's a perennial. A kind of a, a really a pretty leaf. They're yeah. nice to put in salads and stuff like that. There's some different lettuces and onions and these onions actually came from seed on their own. Had onions growing here, and they started their cell. Now that right there is that like a flower or something, or is that going to seed? Or so that's, so that's going to seed. And so that's happen, what you would. It'll get bigger, and it'll form a head, and then inside the little seed pods, once they're completely formed, you'll get these little black pieces, and those are the seeds, and they're kind of brittle. You could break them but they just grow out of this, looks like a piece of charcoal. That's what the seed looks like. Hmm. So if you don't get there in time, the wind will blow and they'll fall all over the place. But you can, you can just clip them off and let them dry out or, you know. And you get a lot of seed from just even one flower head. Right. What's uh, this? So I think it's a geranium or something like that. Donnan's plants, they were wild plants from the, air, the hills in the area here. We got it a wild nursery, so none of these plants here do we water in the summertime at all and they grow like crazy. These are, here. these are artichokes. Not to be confused with Jerusalem artichokes. These are artichokes. We have a few different varieties. I think we have a globe here somewhere and some there's some red artichokes and they all have different you know a little bit different flavor they grow a little differently the leaves are thicker thinner or more pointy or so some of them came through the winter just fine these did those other ones ended up dying so we replanted those we start them from seed and if you start them really early and you put the plants out where it's cold, they feel like that they've gone through a winter and then they'll produce a blossom, you know, the, the artichoke part that people eat. So this is spelt and I had one spelt seed that I planted a couple of years ago and it grew a head of spelt. And so I broke up the head and planted it and now we have a few more that are gonna go to seed. So spelt is what I grow for wheatgrass. So it's really easy to grow your own. You just break up the, the heads and, and just do it like you were gonna do the wheatgrass. You would soak the seeds and then put them on some potting mix and they'll grow right out of the, without even shucking them, they'll go right out of the holes. And they seem to be really healthy. Mr. Bean, our little dog, he, likes them too as you can see he's been <laughs> eating the wheat the spelt grass <laughs> every time he's like eating my spelt grass i'm like but that's my grass <laughs> go get your own 